So I'm going to hand over to the first speaker, who is Magdalene. She is a Libyan secular feminist who came to Britain after facing a lot of difficulties for her secular activism in Libya. She was president of Haki, which means my right, uh, which is an organization that focused on women's issues um, while she was there. She has also studied Sharia law for two years at university level, and at the moment she is a student. So I will just hand over to Magdalene and let her take over. Thank you, Alia, and uh, thank you for coming today. That looks really a good number of audience and very friendly faces, unlike the Goldsmith University. Um, so, um, yeah, welcome everybody, and thanks for all these women who came here today and have the power, actually, to speak about such a controversial subject that can lead you to crucifixion in the 21st century. Um, today, I would like to speak more about Sharia laws and Sharia court and, uh, in Britain, um, and also about the, um, I will touch upon the uh, uh, co uh, convention of, on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women and how it's implemented in the Middle East and North Africa. Um, I wouldn't really speak about my personal experience um, much, but um, because I'm more interested in the legal side of the uh, of this problem. Um, recently, the uh, U UK government uh, start obviously to wake up about this problem, and they're and they're. Um, they announced in its uh, counter extremism strategy report in October 2015 that there is evidence uh, of a problem, but we have a, a, an inadequate understanding of all the issues involved, and therefore we're going to um, uh, uh, to set up a commission of uh, an independent review to understand the extent of which Sharia is being uh, misused or applied in the way which is incompatible with the law. Um, last month in uh, the independent, uh, uh, independent newspaper, there was um, uh, a study was published by a Dutch student. She's um, doing her PhD thesis on Sharia courts in Britain. And um, this um, uh, student, her name is, I can't pronounce, but her second name is Z. Um, I have a problem with the English names, but I will try. <laughs> Uh, much tell that, uh, much tell that, Z. Anyways, so she this, um, she went and visited uh, the Sharia um, Council in uh, in East London, and um, uh, some mosques in Birmingham as well. And she um, uh, she attended the, um, uh, quite a number of um, uh, trial about um, uh, marriage and divorce problems. And she was shocked, but uh, for us, uh, I don't really understand how uh, how they are still getting shocked when they see these things. Because if you um, if you um, uh, allow uh, um, Sharia court, they are really not Sharia courts; they are council or tribunals. They are supposed to um, deal with arbitration and family problems and marriage, religious marriage. Uh, but they uh, they went beyond that. Um, and um, one of the um, one of the trials that this um, this student um, uh, heard is um, women want, uh, wanted to get divorced uh, from her husband, but um, the uh, the council denied her um, her request because when she got married, uh, her husband took a loan by her name of ten thousand, and she had to um, to have to return that money. In, in order to uh, uh, to get divorced. Now I just want to get you through, walk you through the um, marriage and divorce system in Islam. Um, I'm I'm going to speak on on um, Sunni Islam because I'm not sure about Shia Islam. I come from Sunni Islam background. Um, so like when they um, when there should be a marriage, the husband to, uh, would have to give dowry to the wife, and the um, marriage should be according to their in a in a mosque ceremony, and then it can be registered uh, in the uh, as a civil uh, marriage. Um, and then, uh, uh, of course, men are um, have the power for uh, as a superiors to. Um, 
to for divorce. Women doesn't have the power uh, to get divorced. So when they want to de get divorced, basically they have to um, give up all their rights, even if they were like abuse, uh, even if they were living under um, in an abusive um, uh, uh, household and uh, they have to give up all their rights in order to get divorced and which is called khula in Arabic. Um, uh, so uh, uh, they don't really have that um, much rights uh, in, or in, in, the, uh, in terms of marriage and divorce because they have to be obedient. And uh, also they spoke about the um, marital captivity in, um, in uh, Islamic uh, uh, marriages that the man uh, uh, marital captivity it's it's called the uh, Talo. Uh, basically it's like obedience house so if the woman uh, went out without the the um, the uh, 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 what do you call without the permission of her husband I'm sorry um, he can uh, he she can't uh, she can't go out without the permission of her husband out of the house but if let's say they had a problem and she uh, she can't take it anymore she went to her uh, family home and stayed there he can go to the uh, court and ask her to come back to the home under uh, the beta talo which is marital captivity and she can she have to obey that and, um, and also in, in, uh, in divorce, like he, if he, um, according to Islamic Sharia, if he divorced her once by uh, like orally, and uh, he still can, um, uh, can change his mind and, and tell her, okay, I, I changed my mind. If you are not divorced, come back home without any a new renewal of a contract or any, um, any, uh, uh, any new dowry or whatever she without even witnesses so um I, I the idea of like women being sold and bought um in in the islamic uh, sharia laws that uh, i am really against and when i was in libya we um the in hockey organization we were uh, trying to work on these laws and change it uh, uh, to be compatible with um with the uh, CEDAW convention, and uh, which is Libya signed in the 80s, but it's never implemented in, in the uh, local policies. Um, I would like to speak uh, regarding the um, convention. Many uh, like Middle Eastern and uh, North African countries, they all signed this um, convention to eliminate all discrimination against women. But when you, when you look at these uh, countries in particular, um, like Libya, Algeria, Morocco, uh, Pakistan, Qatar, and so on, they all have a problem with Article 2 and Article 16. And they, they basically saying, oh, uh, we will implement the convention as long as it doesn't um, conflict Sharia law. And as uh, our other countries, they are smart, like Algeria, they, as long as it's not conflicting our family laws, which is the same as, uh, which is Sharia law. So, um, so uh, yes, for, for um, oh well. Okay, for, for us, like as women, we are like fighting against um, these laws because it's not according to human rights and it's really um, uh, um, uh, making women as a, as a, uh, a second level um, uh, citizen or uh, a human being. They, she have to protect the honor of the family and she have to, ob to be obedient, otherwise she's not, uh, um, she's not uh, protecting the honor of the family. Um, I'll be uh, available for any questions later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Magdalene. Uh, in terms of Sharia law, a lot of people will say, you know, it doesn't really affect us here in the UK. And, and I think she's made a strong case that there are Sharia courts that operate in the UK and, you know, even, I think what a lot of people need to obviously realise as well is that whatever affects Muslim women affects ex-Muslim women because you can't always differentiate. We're still expected to live by those standards and 
Thank you so much for giving us more information about what's happening as well in the Middle East.